Okay, so um, surprisingly, uh, a video request that I got a lot when I redid my favorite series, favorite standalone, favorite author uh, videos, which I'll link a playlist up there if you want. I'm trying to do playlists now on my channel. Uh, one, one video that a lot of people requested was my favorite audiobook narrators. I like this idea because I have so many amazing audiobooks, which I guess I can make a just general audiobook recommendation video if you want, just a bunch of books that I enjoy that have great audiobook format. I can do that, but I was really excited about this one because now I can give you narrators that perform so well that they make the read the experience of listening to your book so much better and then you can just check out their archive and probably find a bunch of great books that way. So this is going to be my list of my top five favorite audiobook narrators and uh, I'm excited. But first, a word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, business, writing, language, and more. I personally use them for my Spanish and I feel like I've grown a lot in my ability to communicate. And I've also used them for learning techniques to be able to read faster and more efficiently. Also, felt like I learned a lot. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to join all of their classes and communities and the annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Plus, if you use my link in the description, your first two months are free. I love Skillshare and use them daily and I highly recommend checking them out. So <laughs> coming in at number five, it's funny because I, I told my husband this list before I actually like organized the video and he was disappointed at my ranking for number five, but he was happy that it at least made the top five. Coming in at number five is going to be the narrator for the Lies of Locke Lamora. I should look up his name. So the narrator for the Lies of Locke Lamora is Michael Page. There's a lot of things I love about Michael Page. He, he does a great job just with his general narration, but I think the thing that he kills is that he is able to encompass a character's personality and emotions so well. It seems like it doesn't matter what character he's portraying, he embodies exactly who that character is. There's also some really intense scenes in the series, one in particular in book two that is my favorite scene in the book that is very emotional. And the way Michael Page delivers that scene, I just, I think it adds to the scene so much. I think a big part of why it's my favorite scene in the book is because of Michael Page's performance, as well as the snark. Um, of, of Locke, our main character in the series, the snark of this character, Michael Page encompasses perfectly. He delivers every one of his lines exactly how I think Locke would have delivered them. There are some narrators that I think are good narrators. They do a good job, but their delivery of lines sometimes, I just think that can't be how the author meant it because it just doesn't quite hit the mark in my mind, obviously any form of art is going to be subjective, so anybody could disagree me, dis disagree with me, but in my opinion, Michael Page captures the characters like I don't think anyone else could have for this series. Also, his voice for Chains is probably my favorite of his voices because again, just exactly who Chains is. The narrator coming in at number four on this list is a narrator that I've mentioned very recently on my channel, and that's Neil Gaiman. So Neil Gaiman is an author and a really good one. Also, he's one of the best narrators I've ever heard. Honestly, the scope of this man's skill set amazes me. Neil Gaiman is a phenomenal writer. I talked about him in my favorite author's video. Again, the playlist is linked. But not just that, his delivery of his stories, it truly, really, narration is an entirely different art form and skill set to, to uh, writing. Wow. And I've heard authors try to narrate their own books before, and it's usually not my fave, but he encompasses the emotion and the environment. He's a very environmental, re uh, environmental writer, and he captures that em environment in the tone of his voice, in the delivery of, of the lines. He captures it so brilliantly that he's one of the few narrators that even though I love reading his books, just physically, he's one of the few narrators that I feel like ups the experience. I personally, I love audiobooks. I think that it's a great way to consume story whenever you're not able to sit down and physically read. 
Um, but I do prefer physical reading and that is the way that I feel I get the most out of a story. And Neil Gaiman is one of the few narrators that I feel delivers more with his performance than what I can deliver through my mind. If you ever decide to pick up a Neil Gaiman book, just, just try it, try the audiobook. Coming in at number three is Susie Jackson. So Susie Jackson, she narrates a lot of books. She narrates a lot in the YA genre. She has very young voice. And she's honestly the narrator that I aspire to be like. In her general narration, her tones, inflections, her performance overall in, in just the mundane descriptions bring those simple things to life. If you don't know already, I narrate audiobooks. I'm very new at the craft. I'm probably average at best. Susie Jackson, uh, the thing that I struggled with the longest and still don't think I'm 100% at is just general narration. Your paragraphs long of, of exposition or description or whatever, I have a hard time really bringing that to life because it's boring. Susie Jackson makes it so interesting. Her inflections in the most simple things are so perfectly timed. Her, her narration speed is actually great. A lot of narrators speak really slow and Susie Jackson speaks like a normal person. Um, so her narration speed is great. Her inflections are always so just exactly what I want. And her voices too are subtle changes and yet very, very distinct. And I always know what character she's portraying when without it being over the top. She's just, ah, Susie Jackson is amazing. My number two favorite uh, narrator, actually, when I wrote this list down, I had him down at number three. I don't know, Susie Jackson and this guy, they tie for number two, I guess. Um, and that's Jacob Isaacs. You may know him as Lucius Malfoy from the Harry Potter uh, movies. And that's why when I read the, uh, nope, why was I going for the Lies of Locke Lamora? That's why when I read A Monster Calls, I picked up the audiobook. I was planning on reading it physically. It has illustrations throughout, why wouldn't I? But when I found out that Lucius Malfoy was narrating the book, I thought, oh, I should just listen to the audiobook. And then in that single performance, he became one of my favorite narrators of all time. Much like Neil Gaiman, he is one of the only voice actors that I've heard where I actually think that his performance made the story better than it could have been if I read it physically. I love listening to audiobooks, but almost exclusively, it's a better experience if I can, phys if I can physically read. Not so with A Monster Calls. Jacob Isaac's ability to encompass raw, painful emotions honestly, was almost too much. There was a scene in the book where I was just sitting down <laughs> in a chair, sobbing. And I listen to audiobooks. The purpose of them is to be able to still enjoy stories while I'm cooking, cleaning, driving, etc. But this is one of the only audiobooks that when I didn't have anything to do, I sat down, closed my eyes, and just listened, even though I could have been reading. Because the performance that he brought made the scene hit so much harder. Not just the isolated scene, the entire book was performed amazingly, but there's one scene that I'm thinking of that can't have been done better. It just can't have. I wish he narrated more. I really wish he did. I get it, he's an actor first, but I wish he was more of a voice actor. Okay, finally, we're at my number one favorite narrator, and just like with Susie Jackson and, and Jacob Isaacs, really, he could probably, probably be swapped out um, he, he is my number one, but he's, the others are just as good. It's a difficult list for me to do because they're all so amazing and hold such special places in my heart. But anyway, number one is Michael Kramer. Michael Kramer, I think the reason he's number one is because he's the one that I've been listening to the longest. Mistborn is the book that made me fall in love with fantasy again. And Michael Kramer is the one who delivered Mistborn to me the first time I experienced that story. He brought me through the Stormlight archives. Um, well, I kind of went back and forth between physically reading and audiobooking because those books are big and I needed, I needed both in order to get through them. <laughs> but anyway, he helped me get through the Stormlight archive, which is my second favorite series of all time. He's helping me read through the Wheel of Time series, which again are huge. So it's nice to have both formats. Michael Kramer is, uh, He's, he's helped me experience some of my favorite stories. So there's that sentimental thing to it, but also 
Have you heard his voice? Michael Kramer is a narrator that Corey and I looked up interviews with just so we could hear him talk more. He has the most calming, peaceful, soothing, amazing voice just in general. And then when he performs, it's the best. I think one of my favorite voices for him is Rock from the Stormlight Archive, but truly pretty much all of his voices I love. I think he does an amazing job, but just listening to him narrate is already a comfort and already endears me to the story because I love his voice so much. And then his performance is phenomenal on top of that. He is an extremely slow narrator, so you gotta speed him up, otherwise you'll die. But if you're cool with doing that, wow. Wow, his performance is phenomenal. I know a lot of people speed up their audiobooks, and I do sometimes too, um, but these are narrators that I almost never will speed up the audiobook unless it's just like Michael Kramer to make him sound like a normal paced reading because their performance is so incredible that I don't wanna miss out. There are some narrators that I speed up just to get through their performance because I'm not a fan. And then there are other narrators that I feel neutral about and, you know, I might read faster, I might not. And then there's these guys. These guys who I feel would be an offense to speed them up because their performance is so flawless. I'd love to hear you guys' opinions. I'd love to hear some of your favorite narrators or if you've listened to any of these, if you enjoyed their performances as well. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.